Hi everyone, this is a follow-up video to my last where I discussed the difference in aircraft range detection, uh, visual range detection in DCS between a 1080p and a 1440p resolution, assuming the screen size was the same. There was a bit of discussion that was generated as a result of that and one of the main questions that arose, which I didn't really address, was actually what kind of range should be realistic. Is it what we saw in the 1080p screen, where the Vigan showed up 55 kilometers away? Or is it more similar to what we saw in the 1440p resolution, when the Vigan showed up about nine kilometers away? So I wanna discuss a few things. I wanna look at some real, um, real life academic investigations into this question that were actually provided to me by Link in the last video, after the last video, I want to have a look at um, a way you can actually calculate your own aircraft range detection in real life. And then I'll propose another little schema that I've come up with for implementing this into the sim somehow. After the 1080p, 1440p comparison video was posted, there was a small discussion that started on Hoggett and one of the users, Palu013, provided a link to this excellent material that had already been posted before on the ED forums. And here is the material he referenced. It was a post by AirDoc. This post here references two studies, both of which are published in peer-reviewed journals. These are credible studies into how far away people can detect an aeroplane with their eyes. There are a number of aircraft they plugged into a model and they've listed how far, or they've graphed how far their model predicts this aircraft will be detectable based on distance and also on contrast. And a contrast of one is basically the highest contrast between the aircraft and its background. The lower the contrast value means the aircraft color essentially blends into the background. According to their data, a Boeing 747 would be viewable almost out to 50 kilometers. That's pretty much the maximum range which they estimate a Boeing 747 could be detected visually. All the way down to some very small aircraft, including of note for DCS players, the F-16, which is uh, the closest to the aircraft many of us will fly. At its best visibility, they are suggesting it would be visual at about seven or six kilometers, which is very close in, all the way down to 500 meters at the worst contrast. For me, I would suggest that game makers use these maximum values, and we can talk a little bit about that later, it seems to me that large four-engine aircraft should be visible from about 45 kilometers. Medium-sized twins, uh, twin jets, are visible at about the 15 to 20 kilometer range, and single-engine aircraft at about the 10 to 15 kilometer range. There's a second study which is referenced, and this is where an actual aircraft was used. They used a DC-3, which is about the same size, perhaps a little bit smaller than a B-17. It's twin engine, so I would class this aircraft as medium. They tested a number of individuals, how far away they thought they could saw the aircraft from, depending on its approach angle. Now the maximum values in this test were up around the 31 kilometer range, 31, 32 kilometers. So if we use this as a kind of adjustment to the computer modeled data, then this suggests that the medium aircraft somewhere around the 25 kilometer range is about right for a medium twin engine to be first detectable by the human eye. I highly recommend looking at these studies and if possible, try to combine this data with data of your own personal long range aircraft detection. And we can have a look at a method that I use for seeing how far away I can detect an aircraft in the real world with my own eyes.
Now there does exist a pretty reasonable way to work out what your own real life viewing range for aircraft is. And it involves two things. The first is to go outside and look up at the sky. And the second is to have flightradar24.com loaded up on your phone or tablet, something you can take outside with you. Now flightradar24.com shows all the aircraft um, well, maybe not all, but it certainly shows a large number of the aircraft that are currently flying all around the world, and it tracks their transponder information. And as you can see scrolling out here on Central Europe, there are thousands of these things all over the place mapped. So what I've done before, go outside and take a look up at the sky and see if you can spot an aircraft or look for a contrail and then move your eyes to the front of the contrail to confirm that you can actually see the aircraft that is generating the contrail. Now you should ideally know which way you're facing, whether you're facing north, east, south or west, and then open up Flight Radar 24 and try to identify which aircraft it is that you're looking at. So let's say we are here in, um, we'll pick a town here, Hausen, or Schelling in this area of uh, Bavaria and we are looking from this town of uh, Schelling to the north and the northwest and we see this contrail and we can identify that there is an aircraft. We can see the aircraft at the front of the contrail. Opening flight radar 24, there's only one candidate for that and that is this aircraft here which is a Lufthansa. Is it Lufthansa? No, it's not. It is, oh yeah, it's a Lufthansa City Line aircraft, and it's flying at 48,000 feet, and that is above sea level. And let's say I saw this, um, and when I saw it, it was showing as an icon where my cursor is here on the map. So I'm going to take a quick screenshot of this. And what I want to do is I want to measure the distance from where I'm, let's say I'm located, and then work out the distance between there and where I saw that aircraft on the map. For that, I'm going to use Google Earth, and I'm just going to draw a line from my location to where the aircraft was when I saw it. If I forgot where I saw it, I've got the screenshot that I can rely on to confirm the location. But let's just say it was about there where my cursor is next to this intersection between the uh, 2143 and this road, the Hauptstrasse, up to Tal Marzing. Here's the Google map then, and we're just going to measure the distance. Right click, measure distance from there to there. And the map is telling me that aircraft was 6.7 kilometers away across the ground. And we know that he was at 48,000 feet. So we can open up another window and convert that 48,000 feet to meters. He was 14.6 kilometers high. Now you may want to remove the altitude above sea level for this. Um, central Bavaria there, Niederbayern, is about 350 meters above sea level. So let's just round that off at 14,000. So the aircraft was 6.7 kilometers away from me across the ground and 14 kilometers up in the air. Now we can use a trig calculation to work out exactly how far away he was from me or we can just use an online triangle calculator which does the same thing just a little bit easier. So here's a trig calculator just entering side A which is the height above ground 14,000 and side B, which is the distance across the ground, which was 6,700, I think it was, 6.7 kilometers, and then we can calculate. And it is telling me that aircraft was 15,520 meters away from me. So we can say quite comfortably then, if this was true, that I can identify, now this is a twin engine, um, but it's probably a medium-sized aircraft, so I can identify a twin-engine medium at 15.5 kilometers distant.
For those who are wondering, Flight Radar 24 also tracks a large number of uh, small and civil aviation aircraft. Just scrolling in over here near Eichstätt, you can see there's a few of these little sort of propeller-looking aircraft currently airborne. There is this aircraft here, which is a Robin DR400, and that is flying in very close formation, it seems, with this other aircraft here, which is a glider. So there we go. That aircraft there was pulling this glider, and you can see they've just diverged, I think. It looks like that's a tow plane, tow plane for this glider. So there you go. The map can also be used for quite small aircraft. If you live somewhere where there's a small civil aviation field nearby, um, you can use this for judging your distance from aircraft. You can see the smaller aircraft are often the ones where we have the most controversy about how far we can see those. But with a tool like this, you can actually confirm for yourself how far away those aircraft are from you. I've done this a couple of times. I catch the train home from uh, Munich most days, and about halfway on my journey, I'm pulling into the station at Freising. I can see aircraft taking off and landing, obviously, at Munich Airport. But I also did a test. I could see an aircraft that Flight Radar 24 told me was just over the northern suburbs of Munich. It was at 36,000 feet, and it was a twin-engined jet, uh, an Airbus A320. I drew the line from where I was on the train. In fact, I was just near Moosburg by that point. I drew the line and it told me it was 22 kilometers away. So my visual range for that aircraft was about 25 kilometers. So I claim that I can see a twin engine jet aircraft about the size of an A320 at about 25 kilometers. It was right on the edge of my visual range then. So that's where I'd be prepared to say a twin engine jet for me is at uh, max visual range. So at the end of this whole process, I would propose that a simple three category system could be used for determining how far away from a player an aircraft is rendered first as a dot in a sim. I would use three categories mainly out of simplicity and for a start I would not bother with other variables such as angle of approach or the contrast of the aircraft's livery against its background. Certainly those things would be nice to have but I think in the case of just keeping things simple each aircraft could just be categorized into one of these three categories, and then the appropriate rendering distance applied. For large aircraft, 50 kilometers, for medium aircraft, 30 kilometers, and for small aircraft, 15 kilometers. Now, there's always going to be aircraft which you may be able to see at longer or closer ranges, and there's always going to be arguments about which aircraft should fit into each category. For example, the B-17 is significantly smaller than the B-52. However, for the sake of simplicity, I would simply put them both in the large category. At the medium category, I've got the Heinkel 111 and an A319 here. These aircraft are, of course, quite different sizes in real life, but if we're just trying to keep them things simple, then once again, I think you can probably just put them both in the category of medium. And in the small category, then I have all the single-engined aircraft, jets and props included. I would suggest that most rotary aircraft also fit into this category. So the system is far from foolproof, it's far from perfect, but I think it would be a major improvement on what we currently have. First, we have the problem that the aircraft are detectable at vastly different ranges depending on hardware, that would be the very first thing that I think needs to be addressed, that you that needs to be made much more uniform. And then secondly, I would look to apply a very simple method like this for distinguishing between large, medium, and small contacts and rendering those at a graded distance as shown here. So this is just a suggestion. It's also designed to clear up a few of the issues that arose from the previous video, suggestions that I might be 
um, arguing for all aircraft to be visible out at 55 kilometres or so. That is not the case. I am in favour of much more realistic spotting ranges. I would like to see this much more consistent across resolutions and across pixel densities. And then I would like to see a simple method like this employed for distinguishing between those very small and large contacts.